So, yes, I'm D. It's an I. It's a magnetic. Okay, cool. Let me know what the vibe is. Okay, well, my vibe is that. Uh, what's your sign? Oh, Virgo. Really? One degree. Okay. One degree. Oh, okay. I'm Scorpio. So, yeah. Ooh, amazing. Always got to get that. Absolutely. We, we're not so, afraid to go into the depths. <laughs> thank you. So this is, I'm glad that we like set the tone because that's exactly where I want to go today. Yes, amazing. So, um, <laughs> I have to admit, um, after uh, as a woman and as a woman of color, um, I've been dedicating 2020, of course, with all the bullshit that's been going on, right, um, to elevating women, voices, artists mm -hmm. in this industry, because I don't think we do it enough, as a woman myself, and mm -hmm. um, people of color, um, artists. Yeah. So um, when I got your bio, I think I had contacted Jessica, I think it was like three months <laughs> ago, and things were on pause, you know, yeah. from COVID. And then she gets back to me. Are you still up for it? And I'm like, uh, hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. I appreciate yeah. it. And like, you know, especially women supporting women and like elevating each other and, and stuff. And, and, you know, people of color as well, like so far, for example, you know, person I've had remixes like Kobe Say, who's like a, a black um, artist producer. And Linnea Billingsley was like the first woman that did the visuals for, um, the, for Mel, who's a, is a black woman, and like you know, just kind of like getting everyone's voices heard and included, and having different takes on on things is just so much more interesting. And it is well, that isn't it representative of like what the world really is, though. Absolutely, I mean that's the thing. Is like actually, you know, there's so much sadness um, in connected to obviously, you know, what's how people of color have been treated in general, black people, and and but actually like. As, as white people, like what we've missed out on, the richness, do you know what I mean? Like, and, and all of us missing out on all of the others kind of like beauty and, and, and culture and, and, and what we all have to add, you know, um, and, and give to each other is, is, is almost in a sense like the saddest part, you know, that yeah. we've so far like forgotten even that that is just so fundamental and uh, yeah. So. Yeah, you said it so eloquently. So yeah. I mean, <laughs> Um, no, I'm amazed and, and I have a good vibe and I absolutely love the album. I, let me tell you something. I listen to every song and I will say sometimes that doesn't happen. And um, yes. so I have, I have a few favorites and um, yeah, you, I, I'm a, like a new fan. Yay. Yeah. Thank you. I mean, you know, it helps when people actually like, you're talking to like connect with it because because then there's like there's, there's, there's another element and, and layer and I can always tell the people who have and not that everyone has to but it, it's kind of obviously easier in a sense and, and more enriching when someone actually gets gets it you know um yeah so thank you <laughs> yeah um but I'm gonna go back to the artist that you mentioned at the end of the interview okay. um, so I just do this I, I set up the skeleton I look through your, you know uh, research you <laughs> and then um, I might even just go off base with my questions depending on yeah um, the conversation right because I, I believe oh. authenticity, authenticity so anyway yeah. inner songs um, you said you borrowed the borrowed it from the free jazz maestro um, Alan Silva is that um, who is who does he how is he relating to you why did well, you pick that? It's interesting because, like, okay, so that's connected to my my label boss, Joachim, um, and I have a, a very a close relationship, and we both love and appreciate um, records as as a body of work and vinyl as as an, as one medium of that, which is our personal favorite. Um, everything from the album cover, the track listing, the order. Um, and the body of work itself is like all really important and is all part of the same journey, right? To be able to, to as as a whole show show um, what needed needs to be said, basically. And so, anyway, I actually, being honest, have not heard of Alan Silver. It was Joachim who had had this record, and I think it was made in 1974. And I do actually have it here. I have the cover here, which mm -hmm. is phenomenal. Yeah, I can grab it for you if you want. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's like a cosmic bright yellow. Oh, nice. 
Okay. Will and have it faces pieces for bass and voice. Yeah. Okay. And actually, it's interesting because I love like bass is my favorite I thing. Was to work with. No, because I hear it in your. Um, <laughs> I was going to say it's synonymous and perfect. It's actually like it. With your album because that's almost all you can hear is bass and then my voice <laughs> yeah, but I love it but I mean you also add a lot of elements of like strings and like ethereal sound yeah um, and it was almost it put me into a meditative state to be honest <sighs> that's great so, to hear. and you know I'm really big into that and I'm just like wow I, I can't wait to talk to her so <laughs> you said the album came up um describing like hardest three years of your life mm -hmm. do you mind delving into that just a little bit like and then how did that obviously on the other side of things when you were healing did you say hey I need to make the music I need to write about this yeah I think you know for me personally like I've always written from a very very personal place like I, there's not really any other way that I can write and um, you know some people like Kate Bush for example like other artists they can really create stories you know pluck them and of course they're interconnected in some way it's all like collective ultimately but for me you know I'd been through such a tough time and and a lot of it was based around loss and many t different kinds of losses and, and the grief that comes with loss um, but the biggest loss was the loss of myself and loss of self and kind of dark night of the soul you know it was a really really difficult sticky um tough time but what these times do I find is like if you're willing um they allow you to kind of unravel um and perhaps look at the the, the reason why perhaps you've ended up in these situations and, and and not to say that like you know people aren't for example like victims of stuff you know I, I don't mean it like that I just mean if these opportunities come along and then you can go and do therapy or other kinds of therapies to to help you understand yourself more is absolutely what it's about and I did have an opportunity to be able to do that and some of that was talking therapy other things were like literally reading like women who run with the wolves which has been like my bible um and and, and, and a friend and a companion for the past three years and then other things um like body trauma release therapy you did really that? helped me yeah yeah wow yeah super intense but um you know what I've come to understand is that you know all of the traumas we've experienced in our lives are it's all like somatic for me so everything is stored in the body um and I've experienced the release of it so it's like a personal thing that I've been through an experience so I know personally it has it's helped me to to undo those knots and to to let go of things and not store them you know um within was, us was it um like what was it was it a relationship was it you just had this epiphany in your mind like oh god like I I'm feeling <laughs> things like what was the impetus that um mm. wanted you to make this music like what were you going through like specifically well I won't get into like too much the specifics but like I, I will say like a particular relationship triggered all of these things you know for me so so this particular relationship and situation triggered the dark night of the soul energy for me having to go into those places lots of losses of different kinds were, were, were experienced and then and then having to try to deal with the grief, but also promote a record, my first record. Women do, for example, uh, they keep pushing and keep going. There's almost like a lot of the time no other option. And, you know, work for me has always been this blessing when it comes to at least the music side like I've always wanted to do it and I was like no I'm gonna push forward I'm gonna push ahead 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 and then at some point the body goes no you're not <laughs> yeah, right 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 like you have no other choice yeah the body is I think the last thing to really communicate to you if you don't listen to the signs that you need to slow down and for me like I think I had laryngitis twice or maybe three times in one year and as someone who uses the voice as a tool as a way of communicating as well as production um, it, it, that shocked me so to, 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 to literally not have a voice also was kind of representative of, of things I'd been through as well and so you know it's all connected yeah. and I remember when I was in Mexico 
I'd flown over and I was only doing like one or two shows for a festival. And I was like, I have not flown 12 hours to not play this show. So I had someone come on and say in Spanish that I'd lost my voice, but here I am anyway, and I'm going to do my best and I'm going to just oh, make wow. you and affect them live. And so I had to affect my vocals in a way that was just like creative because I couldn't really, yeah, vocalize it's anything. A, you had an Imogen heat moment. What, what, what's that? What Imogen, did she do? Imogen. Im- Imogen Hate. What, what did she do? I don't know the moment. Um, she did the hide and seek. You know, she manipulated her vocals. Oh, yeah. 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 That's what totally. I was saying. You had in that moment. <laughs> yeah. No, totally get it. No, yeah, I, I did actually. And it's really interesting. It's like super creative. But one thing I realized in that moment was like, actually, for me, I'm so grateful that because some producers they just produce like the music and they don't add their voice to it themselves but I'm so blessed that I'm able to do both things mm-hmm. and there's such essence that is carried in each voice you know a speaking voice and also especially a singing voice like you're often just this like conduit for something to come through and so it was it was just an understanding in that and, and you know all of this for me was like basically a, a rebirth of, of, of sorts ultimately and um, yeah so like although these these times are dark I think you know to lean into those cracks and to to do the work and to go in um, ultimately allows you to build or rebuild a foundation mm-hmm. for yourself. You know. Yes, and so here we go. Like here's the album, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and like, okay, so you and J- James were yeah. like in the studio for how you said a month? Like just yeah, um, month? it's. It's crazy. So uh, for Arpeggi, which is the first track on the album, mm-hmm. was written, not written, but reproduced the cover like a, a, a year earlier with someone else. Um, and I was using the Pro One with that and like always wanted to cover it because I was like, oh, it's called Arpeggi. Like Arpeggi to me, I just think synth. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I love Radiohead and I love In Rainbows. And I, it was kind of like a little ode to, to, mm-hmm. to Tom and, and Radiohead. And then, yeah, the rest of it, and more actually um, was the music itself, not the lyrics or the vocals or anything, but like the, the core of the music was written in 35 days. Oh, that's, that's I don't even know how. It honestly like, it's like a blur and I've had to do some kind of stuff where I've gone back and I've like dissected like a, a one track or a couple of tracks and I'm, I really have to go in and I really have to think mm-hmm. what happened because it was so fast. Yeah. I almost feel like I wasn't present. But I was totally present at the same totally time. And maybe sense. you were just super hyper focused a month, just dedicated, right? Yeah. Like music, sounds, unraveling your, or maybe the positive reactions of your body from all the trauma therapy that yeah. you had. And you're just like ready to get rebirth. Yeah, yeah. Month. It was, a, it was, a, yeah, creating the, the, the creation after the destruction, I think. Yeah, but like <laughs> rising out of the ashes, right? Yes, quite literally felt like that, yeah. <laughs> and so like, okay, so my favorite tracks that I want to talk about are yeah. On, Rewild, and Line. Line was the one that I thought when you were just talking, that one was speaking mm. specifically about the, right? Yeah, totally. absolutely. Absolutely, so absolutely. Tell me like when, I mean, I know it's a blur, but like, if you can remember some, it's mm. beautiful lyrics. All the lyrics are beautiful on this album. Thank but you. Line. Um, yeah. So it's interesting because relating to the body trauma release therapy, I actually wrote. So a week after that, I felt very low. It was like everything was able to really flow out of me, and I was able to really have to feel, you know, what I was kind of trying to keep in and together. And that was the week just so happened to be that I had to write the lyrics for everything. And I keep big books of like notepads and I'm always writing ideas and thoughts. And this is how I kind of like free write a lot of the time. So some of it's already there and definitely already there of stuff I was going through. And so I kind of cherry pick and then I write new stuff and I bring it all together. And every time it's a new album, I I get a big um, pad and that's my album lyric ideas book. So yeah, so I just with that one, um, James actually had the music written for that as a complete other track that he was going to have for his own project years ago. And I've never like used someone else's thing. I've always written from scratch, right? But um, I love the melody of it. 
Mm-hmm. And so I took the melody, we took the track, completely reproduced it, like K-load it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and then I was ready to to write the lyrics. And with this one, I just really like the honesty. Like I, I didn't want to be anything other than real, honest, truthful. Um, you know, it's a bit uncomfortable to to write about something so personal in that way, but the messaging had to be real and there's so many confused mixed messages in pop music for example Mm -hmm. that's really dangerous Mm -hmm. and you know most of my life you know growing up in the 90s like pop music is all about like staying with someone no matter what you know like you know never mind yourself like you know put yourself aside like ride or die like no I I don't prescribe to that bullshit quite frankly (laughs) it's dangerous yeah it's really dangerous so for me it, it promotes losing oneself and self-identity. And your album is all about the opposite. Yes. Like things yeah. are going to be okay. I'm getting yep. myself back. It was great while it lasted, right? Mm, 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 mm. Totally, yeah. Just like a, and that's where like rewild comes from, rewilding the spirit. Um, but just quickly with line, like, you know, the chorus is like, love is not enough to stay. So obviously what I mean by that is kind of, well, if it's obvious, but you know, just to be in love with someone isn't enough of a reason to stay in a, in a situation that is perhaps detrimental to, to, to you. Um, and I'd rather be on my own. You know, I'm going to trust what's being shown. Love is not enough alone. It was important to me to have a strong message like that. And that's why the production of the vocals is at the top, because it needed to be clear. You know, no hiding behind like space echoes and delays and like all this yeah. stuff. It was like, this yeah. is what I need to say. It needs to be heard clearly, you know, so. And it was, by the way, because <laughs> it's like Yay. one of my favorite tracks. Oh, amazing. Um, and talk a little bit about um, On, because I have a couple more. On. Mm-hmm. On is one of my favorites, at least at the moment. I mean, it's like the second song. Yeah. I just, I'm really proud of that song, basically, like writing the music and 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 everything about it and it was written on the day the music was written on the day that Keith Flint from the prodigy died so if you listen like if you ever get a chance to listen to you know the instrumental parts obviously I haven't got the instrumental itself but if the instrumental itself I listened to it the other day and it was so emotional and it was like you know very euphoric but like really and I look at the lyrics now and of course it related to my personal situation but actually it also felt like kind of like because it was called Spirit of Keith for ages because it was written on that day. That was originally what it was yeah. called. Oh. Yeah, for ages. And I was like, should I just call it that? And I was like, no, actually, probably. But um, Do you but mind actually, my reference? Can I put that in there? Yeah, of course yeah. you can. Yeah, but absolutely. I love these little tidbits. So. Yeah, it's it's the process, isn't it? Yeah. And like, so it, it's funny. Like sometimes the, the names that you you know you come up with are just ridiculous, and you're just having a laugh. And then other ones are like, okay, no, this is a song that was written on the day that Keith died, and but it is kind of '90s tinged in terms of the production as well, and also the euphoria of like the chorus and the chords and everything else. But actually, I realized the lyrics could also be related to his passing. Now I am moving on. Yeah, you know? like um, right, you know, all, all this stuff. Um. This is how it must go, because because he he committed suicide, right? So it's 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 interesting how you know you are this conduit, and it keeps coming back to me so much more. Like in this album, more than anything, of like letting those ideas flow is is so important. But I I, I adore that track, and and it's the transmutation of the sadness into a forward motion mm-hmm. that I really love about it. And so like again, the second half being more dancey you know, that relates again to releasing stuff in the body and the body movement and how that is freeing and and liberating. Oh, wow. I love it. Okay. So how did you get to the title on? (laughs) It's quite boring, actually. It's just kind of like, (laughs) you know, because I I have, I always, pretty much always, if there's lyrics, use a, a word, you know, from, from that, um, not, not always, um, like, you know, with angsty, it was more about the feeling of anxiety, feeling anxious, feeling like all these, and I just came up with a new word. Whereas this one, you know, it was about onward, that onward motion. And I think I wanted to just have a very simple word. And it's usually one word apart from corner of my sky, because that's because John Cale came up with that. So, you know, okay. that was poetic. And, but for me, I really like short titles for some yeah. reason. Um, simplistic, right? And book Yeah, just, 
to a point, you know, um, and leave it open in a sense, but at the same time, like have the kind of theme or the, the, the energy a nod towards that. Mm-hmm. Perfect. Okay. So moving on, I mean, I do have corner of my sky on here. <laughs> and um, so you said that that was more like a John. Did he really lead that song? Because he has his vocals on it. Or did, like, how did you guys come up with, okay, John, you, you have to. Um, put your vocals on this <laughs> yeah because it's not a sort of casual um collaboration that one you know he's a bit of a legend that that guy but um I again I wrote the music with James and um all I'm gonna say is that it used to be called Mushroom I'm just gonna <laughs> leave it there you know um and and I and I and I'd worked with John a couple of years earlier um doing vocals on one of his tracks and so we met you know in real life and we were in a session together and it was just an amazing experience and he ended up being this like old school producer type that like touched nothing but touched everything and like was super encouraging and I hit this high note that I'd never hit before and it was you know it was just this magic that came through and the reason why we connected in the first place because I love like the Welsh heritage Mm -hmm in a sense and like I have to say like you know not in comparison to to what's going on with like Black Lives Matter or people of color at all but within the UK like Wales has been a quite sort of oppressed place and oppressed people and oppressed language and so to be patriotic is, is not to be nationalistic in, in in Wales it's it's been a necessary um, energy to keep our language alive and to keep our culture alive that was almost almost disappeared like Honestly, only in the past like five years have the road signs been changed into Welsh and English, English and Welsh. It was English mostly. Insane, but that shows you how. How long? long, It wasn't that far um, ago that they just changed it to both. How long? No, no, I don't know. Between five, five, six, seven years, something like that. You can probably Google it, but I just remember thinking like, "Oh my god, that's so not long ago," you know. And I think. Yeah, and not many people know about it, you know, um, and, and even uh, Wales, it means when Anglo-Saxons invaded the UK, um, it, Gales, or, um, or, and then which went to Wales, like, it used to mean foreigner. Mm. So for our country to still have that resonance yeah. of, 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 of the word foreigner, and as I see it, like words carry power and uh, spells, you know, spelling, you know, um, it's been a mentality that we've had to sort of uh, a thing, a reality that we've had to deal with. And, you know, it's a working class country. Wow. Um, Wait, hold on. Wales translates to foreigner. Yeah. I think it's like an Anglo-Saxon, like a very old translation. Yeah. I read that the, uh, a few months ago. Yeah. Well, for me about empowerment, uh, sorry, it just really like that really upsets me uh, mm. because I see this, as going outside of um, Black Lives Matter, like you said, and seeing like just the oppression and the historical context is mind baffling. And then when you say that, it's like, it, like with me as a writer, I'm intentional. With me as an artist, I'm intentional. You, you, you're very intentional. Yeah. I, I'm 100% in agreement. Words do have power. Mm. Can you guys not change well? I mean, <laughs> It's, it's, I think so, we've done that like weird thing that like a lot of people, I know it's wild, isn't it? Yeah. Um, but you, we've done that weird thing that like a lot of people, you know, marginalized people do, which is like flip it on his head. And we've created this like pride. And, 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 and when you say I'm well, she's like this, this, this pride in it. And, and, and we have like a national anthem and national anthems can be like, you know, mm, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's a difficult one, but the Welsh national anthem, if you translate it, is all about the lands and all about, it speaks of how we, the foreign tongue will not like stamp on our sense of who we are. Mm -hmm. It literally says that. Mm -hmm. And it says, it talks about Wales being a land of song and a land of poets and how that can never be erased you know but we were for 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 you know a few hundred years ago unable to speak and sing in our own language and you know but yeah i do feel it's that thing where it's been flipped on its head and you kind of take back the power in some sense yeah. also yeah. which is kind of what many people have had to do you know and that's awesome no ah, i could talk to you forever 
So like, <laughs> but that's, why, that's why I put Welsh language on that track. You know, John Cale sings in Welsh mm-hmm. and I got the press release and only then did I not know that, did I know that he hadn't written in Welsh in like two decades. Wow. Why? Because it's just. I don't know. I, I I don't know. I think I think I remember reading he had like a you know he, he regretted a disconnect that he hadn't connected to his land. Although he's done lots of work with Welsh people and mm-hmm. and and artists and tried his best to connect. Like he lives in America. Um, I'm not sure, but I I, I feel you know I, I encouraged him to do that, and so you know the, yeah. I sent him the track. Mm-hmm. I talked about how for me it was related to the land and especially Wales. For some reason, it came through. And if he could just go into his relationship with Wales and if he felt like it, if it came to him to sing or speak in Welsh. And so what he sent me back was beautiful. And then I took that and completely rearranged it. Can you tell me what it means? The lyric? The lyric yeah, word? so there's um, Dechre on a Gogleth, which means it started in the north. Um, and, and he says, like, start. It started in the north. So he's kind of talking about, like, where he was from and where it began for him. And then the second thing he says in Welsh is, but he's singing this. So there's something about a, a, a man singing in his home tongue that's mm-hmm. like, oh, my God. I, I know, right? <laughs> oh, my God. Um, and he says, Beth, Beth or the Tinvedal, um uh, birth of the team battle so so um it, it started in what was a madhouse um it was a madhouse you know and I think his childhood was kind of like a quite surreal uh, trippy experience and 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 I uh, I don't want to quote this but I think something related to like he had a yeah he had a difficult childhood basically it's not for me to speak on um so he went there and I think that's cathartic and 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 a beautiful thing and I feel honored that he was able to go there and felt safe to do that. Yeah, no, thank <laughs> you for sharing that. Um, but Corner of My Sky, did you guys come up with that um, title together? No, I, I came up with it um, just because it be- it begins with him and his commanding storytelling voice. And this is the other thing, you know, reading Women Who Run With The Wolves, like it, you know, Clarissa talks about the, the 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 storytelling, the art of storytelling, and how it's been lost. And stories carry messages, and stories carry warnings, full warnings, and they've been lost. You know, we just now have the fairy tale, mm-hmm. which is actually like so far from reality that it's everything's warped. You know, mm-hmm. um, so he starts with the moon in the corner of my sky is curdling in the sun. And so again, I was doing that thing, scanning through the lyrics. There were so many good ones, but for me, <laughs> corner of my sky was like you know that little patch, like yeah. this patch when I'm in Wales. Like this is my little patch of sky. This is my little. This is my corner. You know, this is my and 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 it just encompassed for me that sense of home. <laughs> so okay, we have two more night and wake up. Yeah, and that was perfect. I liked the ending of. The, the song that you picked wake up but night um if you can speak to that track yeah um <laughs> it you know it was kind of about like you know um a new situation a kind of positive connection um with with someone which you know reminded me of when you start to feel again and when you know, in the nighttime, I feel like the veil is thinner. I feel like we have more access to our true emotions. So especially if you're sharing space with someone in, in, night, in the nighttime, I feel like it's a very intimate thing. And um, so that's why it says, like, feel what's right only in the night. See what's right only in the night. As in, like, you're just closer to, like, your true feelings. Like, you're not distracted like you are on the day. Like, mm-hmm. oh, I have a Zoom meeting. Oh, I have to, oh, you know, you're just distracting yourself from, like, the, what you feel or whatever. And, um, and yes, you know, they always say artists are night owls like me. Like, yeah. right? Because I think that's that yeah. moment of silence, right? You can think yeah. of other your thoughts. and <laughs> It's so true. And, like, you know, it's funny because I can go and I can work in the studio in the day. Like, that's not a problem. But the lyrics will flow in the nighttime or the feelings will come up, which inspire things, you know, um, definitely. And so it crescendos, you know, because it's building up of that feeling of, like, wow, this is amazing. This feeling is so good. And that's why it says it feels so good to be alone. 
and you know with with oneself and so also talking about wording like alone and I read this in Clarice's book alone used to be two words meaning all one so whole it's just become something else ah. so it's it's like a relation about like feeling whole again and definitely with oneself but also in this instance with another and that's why at the end when it really kicks in it's like with you you know mm -hmm. um but it's fundamentally about with myself right um i wasn't I was surprised to get the story that you just told me behind it. It was still more of like, for me, I thought you were still talking about like, I don't know, like a breakup, but like, you're free. You're like, okay, it's going to be okay. I'm okay at nighttime. You know? Mm. But, but it, that's the thing. It, it, it all is interconnected. So that's, that's what I'm saying. It feels so good to be alone. Also just saying that is powerful. Mm -hmm. It feels so good to be like, I've never been afraid to be by myself. Mm -hmm. no. And now more so than ever. <laughs> no, but it's empowering. Um, after, even if it is, I don't know, relatable to a breakup, which it could be, right? It depends mm -hmm. on the person. And yeah, people. I mean, you, you take what you need from it. This yeah. is the other thing. It, you know, once it passes through me, it's, it's not about me anymore. It, it is and it isn't. Like, I, you know it will connect with people and resonate with people as it should. Mm -hmm. And so there's no wrong answer, you know? Yeah. Um, so I was just like, wow. I mean, I did not get sad. It was, this was not like a sad breakup. No. This was like an empowering. Um, and I only say breakup because I didn't know the story before I spoke to you. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. But I was yeah. like, wow. She's like saying that it's okay to, you know, be by yourself. It's okay. Yeah. To, um, be sad over a breakup, but it's okay to acknowledge that this too shall pass. That's yeah. what I thought, right? Like, totally. I mean, like that's interjected with with basically the essence of of the album um, and all the different phases of 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 that, you know. Mm -hmm. So yeah. <laughs> and then lastly, wake up. Yeah. Well, I love this one. Yes, me too. <laughs> I. God, the, the, the music behind it to start with was literally so simple. Like, there's just one little synth, like, dun, 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 and then just like moving through different. Things. So, I just had that very simplistic thing with no arrangement whatsoever musically, which is usually quite, un is quite unusual for me. And I just, these melodies started coming, and um, it's, it's, it's a, Part of it is a commentary on swipe culture, you know, swipe to the next phase, another new phase. But it was, the, the poignant lyrics for me are like never pausing to take it in, always avoiding your sense of dread. I think like it's, it's a commentary on like where we are as a collective and how technology plays a part in that. And of course, it's, it's a commentary on myself. Like it's not judging people. It's just like, I do this, you know, like um, constantly, like if you feel sad or low, you know, going to your phone or to your laptop or your, t you know, we, we kind of have these things that are building as habits, which are not necessarily healthy. Um, and then, you know, more importantly, even in the lyrics in this one, there's a moment where it's instrumental and the strings come in mm -hmm. and then there's this little like arpeggio, incessant arpeggio, super fast. This is my and favorite, I, that's yeah. my favorite part. Yeah. It's, okay. Amazing. I was like, it's like the heavens open. I'm like, ah. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. No. I, yeah, and that's the thing. Like, again, like I can take credit to a degree. And then the other part of me is like, well, you know, it just flowed. And, mm -hmm. and that for me, and I only realized this after I wrote it. And there was one time I was, I was in tears listening to it because I realized the strings were earth and earth saying like, help me. Like, please 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 begging us begging me begging all of us to just stop and see and and feel into what's going on and like you know stop this incessant capitalistic you know uh, just energy that is just destroying and then I realized that the arpeggio on top the incessant incessant arpeggio was all the technology and all the distractions saying no don't look at that like let's just keep going like da, 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 look at me over here like you know and then on Twitter, look at my ID. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Just, just distracting ourselves and, 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 and not, not, not feeling into the truth because perhaps it's overwhelming or perhaps we don't know how to, because we've disconnected from ourselves so much because of the direct, um, 
disconnection from nature, which is us. We are it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it was um, it was just very sad to, to, to feel into that. But it's also this it's beautiful. It's beauty as well. Um, and so to end with like a little whisper of wake up, the wake up was like, wake up, repeat again. So wake up, swipe at your phone, look at your phone every morning when you're the most vulnerable, when you're like, you're just in between, you're coming out of dream space, dream time, like all these messages in your dreams that perhaps have come to you. But instead of like waking up and writing them down or starting the day gently, you go straight to your phone. I'm talking about myself here, you know, having to look at myself and then it's every day. Okay, well, I'm not going to do that tomorrow, but then I do. And so wake up, repeat again. <laughs> No, we're all guilty of that. So, yeah. But then also like wake up, repeat again, as in ignoring or being unable to connect to the truth of what's happening. And obviously this is before the pandemic. This is before like social justice movements were like able to like actually flourish in a way that hasn't been felt for a while because of the pause. So the pause that I wanted for the planet didn't necessarily look like this because let's be honest, like people have suffered, you know, it's, it's, it's not a joke, but um, there's been some silver linings, let's say that I feel have come from this moment in time. I do, I do. Uh, like the pause. Yeah. The beauty and silence, the beauty of being aware of actually what's going on mm -hmm. in the world in different parts, being able to virtually connect with other people like yourself, right? Yeah. You would never yeah. think possibly of doing this way of communication. I would yeah. have a phone or with you or an email yeah. with you, right? Yeah, um, totally. Uh, you, you might have been too busy on tour, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, or yeah, 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 yeah. Trying to crank yeah. out something else. I mean, yeah. so many things. So I, I definitely agree with you. There's such a blessing. Um, you said something earlier. Um, right when the pandemic um, hit and, you know, there was some self quarantine and it was super uncertain, even so it's still uncertain. I'm like, yeah. what's going on still? Yeah. Um, and the U S is like the lepers of the world right now because we can't. Yeah, it. it's, yeah. Um, I connected with nature again. I was like, what am I going to do? Like, you know, right. everything shut down. I was right. like, Oh, let me go have a walk. Yeah. You know how long yeah. it's been since I took a walk. Totally. I mean, totally. you know, and I was like, Oh, like, all these things that like, you know, I, there were all these tiny thoughts that I would have and observations I would have. And like, this sounds so simple, but like, I live in a, in a place that's kind of like, it, it's village-esque. It's in London, but it's village-esque. And there's a village square and like, people rarely ever sat there. Mm -hmm. And I think that's such a shame. And that's such a reflection of the times that we don't have enough time to sit and pause, yeah. right? Yeah. But now it's full. Mm -hmm. And now on weekends, it's full of like, you know, parents with their children because it's the only open space within the village that's good mm -hmm. um and then now everyone's out in nature and in wales actually wales had to close their borders because when the lockdown was happening people were fleeing into the mountains mm. for fresh air and yeah. so they had to close the borders because it wasn't safe but like we have come to a place of like not taking for granted these spaces and they that and 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 creativity and music and and everything else has been fundamental for our survival as well as you know healthcare workers and and frontline workers and you know the real bare bones of of, of society and and uh yeah so we, it's shown us a lot I think yeah thank you so much I mean this has been like an amazing amazing interview by the way <laughs> um, and I hope to like hear so much more um from you in the future uh when was your tour have you thought about I know it's all uncertain right so is that well, happening or are you doing virtual something or? We're looking into the virtual thing um, in the next, you know, for the next few months, because for me, it has to be, you know, excellent. Um, I'm not going to do like a, I can't do it from my bedroom or I can't do it from my house. Like it has to be like a real legit setup that can actually do the, the live show justice and the songs justice. So I'm going to be very picky with that. Um, <laughs> and then in terms of touring, it will be next year and we're going to be announcing dates for next year and, and stuff. But, you know, it's, um, it's a difficult time for, for many people. And I know, you know, to do music is, is definitely a great privilege of, of a lifetime, but, um, it's also, it, it has been tough and I've only been able to talk to my kind of music friends about it because you sound like so privileged and we're going to moaning, but, but like, you know, it's like 70% of my income just disappeared. Mm -hmm. And then there's people who work in venues and venues that will never reopen. And 
where are the spaces and places going to be that we go to 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 gather Mm -hmm. and to gather is is everything and I think it will be almost like a religious experience to connect in that way again Mm -hmm. so you know um it's a difficult time on on many levels um but I hope that the cultures can be saved you know Mm -hmm. yeah absolutely it's definitely taken a hit on the entertainment industry especially music speaking of Welsh artists underworld have you ever thought of yeah i actually opened for that they asked me to open for them for a show um they asked me to dj um so i opened for underworld in london at these super intimate shows that they were doing uh towards the end of last year or was it like maybe two years ago i can't remember but yeah i did um having collaborated with them no but i mean that would be amazing wouldn't it <laughs> yeah well when i was reading that i'm like she has to like Welsh people, you know, they do yeah, they do like together a little bit in a good way, in a creative yeah. way. <laughs> anyway, I'll let you go. Um, and thank you so much, you know, for you know how deeply you've connected and you clearly listened and kind of you know gone deep and you know thank you for saying that you appreciate kind of the intention because I don't get to talk about. I mean, I do talk about it because that's just how I how I want to communicate it but yeah there's so much intention with everything and so you know I always look to those artists that do that even like bigger ones like Beyonce she's another Virgo so I know I know right? there's intention with everything and there's detail in everything and it's incessant detail um but it's 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 it's, it's with purpose and um I think that stuff is kind of always more timeless when it it is it is directed in, in that way you know so Oh, awesome. Have you seen Black is King? Yes. I mean, oh. well, you know me. I'm like, okay, so Scorpio, I have like verbal qualities, but like I'm a perfectionist. Yeah. Like I'm like vibing out to the music, the lyrics, and also the fashion. I was like, oh, oh my God. Look. <laughs> She's got it all. And you know, this is kind of random, but I ended up talking to Beyonce's producer the other day, Derek Dixie, who's mm-hmm. absolutely phenomenal. So he produced lemonade with her um he's like the musical director he did um uh coachella he did you know like um black is king and like the lion king album with her like all the stuff in the last years i'm like fucking hell she's like stepped it up here he's been part of and then the other day just being me being me i just was like I'm just going to message him and ask him how on, on Black Parade did you get this bass line? Because I fucking love the production. <laughs> it was like analog synth bass line, but like really gritty. And I really loved it. And I was like, hey, man, like, how did you make that bass line happen? Like, what? And, and, he was, and he's like, oh, hey, man, thanks so much. Like, it was a custom 808. So Beyonce oh. has a custom 808. Of course she does. So he was like, yeah, it's this custom 808 and this really low brass and like balancing the low brass. And I was like, oh my God, this is fucking genius. And then Black as King came out and right at the end when she's like with her son, you can hear that brass and mm-hmm. then the bass line kicks in. And so, you know, I don't think Beyonce's producer, you know, replies to everyone necessarily, but I... I was just connecting to that and I just, I love her Virgo detail oriented mind and intention with everything. And I respect that so much. I hope that you love the interview and what I've done with it. If you can yeah, I, I, I'm sure I will. I, you know, you, you clearly work with intention yourself. So, you know, it's, it's okay. not, not that, it's not that often that that happens. So <laughs> and, and how do you say bye? See you later. Uh, huil, huil. Oh, huil. 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 <laughs> <laughs> bye. Have a good day. Yeah, thank you so much. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye.